G'day, Andrea San Luis. I'm from Suncorp, which is um, a banking and insurance company here in Australia. Look, my question is actually about um, the future of Bitcoin into contractual spaces. So, um, what uh, what do you see as kind of um, how do you see the future playing out with um, conditions and contractual terms being attached? Oh, that's that's a great question. Um, there's a, there's a broader space that people are calling Bitcoin 2.0, but in fact, I, I think is very much part of Bitcoin itself. And the the birth of Bitcoin didn't happen in a vacuum. It happened uh, among a community that was very uh, active in talking not just about currency, but about smart contracts and smart property. Uh, Bitcoin and transactions within them have a scripting language, and that scripting language can define the conditions you need to redeem an amount of Bitcoin. Now, almost all of the transactions you see on the Bitcoin network today, the condition they have on them is whoever can show the keys for this ownership can redeem the Bitcoin. Um, but it doesn't have to be that way. You can, you can put much more complicated scripts. So you can say, for example, only after a certain date or a certain block number, you can require multiple signatures in a multi-sig, as it's known. You can do tiers of multi-sig. You can say one of these three or two of these five, and after this date, and make very complex programming contracts. And even beyond Bitcoin, there are other protocols that are exploring that um, in more detail. I think uh, the the space of smart contracts is really exciting because it also ties in very well with what people are calling the Internet of Things and smart property. So let me give you an example of a smart contract that you can execute today. Uh, most cars today have electronic ignition and engine management systems that are keyed off uh, your key. And your key isn't just a metal key that opens the lock uh, on the ignition. It also has most of them have a chip inside that does a full encrypted challenge response protocol. So the key identifies itself to the car, the car identifies the key, and that unlocks the electronic ignition system. Um, you will find papers online specifically on the idea of smart property, where, for example, a car can use the blockchain to identify its owner. So instead of being presented with a physical key, you can present it with a key that's, that's off your mobile wallet, for example, which proves ownership to your car every time you step inside, just over Bluetooth um, with your mobile wallet. But the interesting thing here is that you could sell your car to someone and transfer that token with a Bitcoin transaction. So Sam's here. Um, we create a transaction which has two parts. One part gives me $10,000, and the other part of the transaction transfers the key token for my car to Sam. Once that transaction is signed, both parts go into uh, effect. As soon as that transaction is recognized on the blockchain, the car can validate that transaction itself without any external reference. It can validate from the blockchain, either by keeping a full copy of the blockchain, or by be, being presented with a part of the blockchain called the Merkle path, it can validate ownership. So the car says, here's a transaction. This transaction says I have a new owner. This transaction has proof of work behind it. It's been included in a block. Therefore, I believe it, because it's on the blockchain. And ten minutes later, once that's part of a block, now the car will start on his key, not mine. I basically not just sold the title, and transferred it, but I've also transferred electronic control of the car. And the interesting thing is, this is not in a central registry. This is not the car calling Toyota to find out. It's looking at the proof in the blockchain to discover its own owner, and verifying that completely within itself. Uh, those are the kinds of things you can do. You can do that with a car. You could do that with a title for land. You could do that with a registry. Um, in in a conference I was at recently, a couple of people put their wedding vows on the blockchain, so they could essentially have their marriage registered on the blockchain. The blockchain technology itself is a synchronized, securely time-stamped database that can store information about ownership. And that means ownership of anything. So in, a, in, in the Internet of Things, combined with the Internet of Money, you have this incredible potential for creating tokens that transfer ownership for anything you can imagine. Um, and, and that's a really exciting thing, because it's also a much more secure transaction. I don't know if any of you have tried to sell a car. 
Um, but when you do try to sell a car, what you'll notice is that that kind of transaction attracts a lot of bad actors. So you have to be careful that you don't get robbed at gunpoint. Um, you have to be careful when you're buying a car yourself and showing up somewhere with a lot of cash that they don't run away with the cash and not give you the car. And when I receive cash for my car, I have to make sure that cash is real, right? It's not easy to tell counterfeits. So if I'm given counterfeit money, then I'm stuck because I've given the car to someone else. Uh, but if I'm given a check, then I don't know if it will bounce. I have to go to a bank and do all of this complicated dance inside a bank in order to sell a car. Well, I sold my car in July for Bitcoin. And here's the interesting thing. The person who bought the car wasn't there. They bought it on behalf of their brother. They were in another state in the US. The brother came over, test drove the car. He said, yeah, it looks good. Can you buy it? I gave them my Bitcoin address. They transmitted the money from another state. It was 11 p.m. on a Wednesday. Banking hours were well past. Right? What a unique, arcane concept, banking hours. <laughs> what the hell is that? Anyway, so three to five business days later, no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> 30 minutes later, I had three confirmations. So I, I sat down and had a, a, a late snack uh, at a local eatery. And um, after six confirmations, I signed over the title to the car, and it was done. Six confirmations was not only enough to secure a 10,000 transaction. I could, have, I could have sold a Ferrari with six confirmations quite comfortably about receiving that kind of money. Now that was a seamless, easy straightforward transaction. You can't do that with cash. You can't do that with a check. So, and, and that wasn't even using smart property. It was just the basic Bitcoin. 